Guess we'll call it a Big Ten semifinal in Evanston with Northwestern hosting Wisconsin, two of the undefeated teams in the Big Ten with the East uh, having their own uh, semifinal of sorts as well. Mark Rogers TV, the voice of college football, breaking it down. Badgers and Wildcats. We got Tyler Hunt on the line from SB Nation's Bucky's fifth quarter. Hey, Tyler. Hey, Mark. How's it going? It's going pretty well. How are you? Good, good. Coming off uh, a big win at the big house is always uh, fun. Is that and a big fun. win? Big did, win. Did you guys look pretty big impressive win. in that one? I didn't yeah. notice. Yeah, that one was a lot of fun. It's always tough for Wisconsin to win there, and now they got to turn around and, and go to another place that they've had uh, some struggles you know, winning at Northwestern. So it's a tough two-week stretch, but it's nice to just have Badger football and playing and, and thankfully playing well. As soon as I make this statement, people out there watching the video are going to say, Michigan's awful. Yes, I know Michigan's awful. Michigan's still a very talented team with a talented roster. That that was impressive. It was a butt kicking from opening drive, just annihilation on both sides of the football. Yeah, it felt really good. I think uh, I, it seemed like the the team was really working out some frustration. You know, you come out, you play well, you're opener. I uh, have to take two weeks off because of, you know, it's nothing on the field that you can control because of it. You know, it's a virus. You're battling that um, after working so hard to kind of get the season back. Um, so it was kind of a, a, I'm sure a stale taste in their mouth. So to be able to come out and just finally hit somebody else, you know, it's, it's keep really hitting and making contact with other people, I'm sure was fun for them. And um, they worked out a lot of kinks as well, which is really good. You know, that opener. There were some things that looked like, you know, first game jitters and opener, you know, type things. Uh, they they worked it all out, it seemed like, last Saturday and really put it to Michigan, which is always fun for Badger fans. I know last year was a, a big blowout of Michigan, and this year I, I didn't know how they'd follow suit, but they did it and then some. And Graham Mertz didn't necessarily have to factor into it heavily in regards to just lifting the team on his back. Uh, he played decently, but... That wasn't an overwhelming performance. Didn't need to be. Yeah, I think that actually I took a lot from that in terms of, you know, he's a redshirt freshman. Um, you know, I was worried if he came out and missed some throws, you know, how does the redshirt freshman respond? Maybe trying to force something or, or, or put throws that aren't quite there. But I think maturation wise, we saw a lot from him that he wasn't trying to do too much. He wasn't trying to be a guy that uh, was putting too much on his plate. He knew he didn't have his best stuff. Um, you, you saw a little rust early at a couple passes, and he said, you know what, I'm just going to come out and, um, you know, let the rest of my teammates do the job. Thankfully, the running game was clicking the way it was, and he didn't have to do too much. So I think it was a good game back for him to get his feet wet and, uh, you know, hopefully have a good week of practice this week and be ready for a really tough Northwestern front. We've seen the Wisconsin teams that have the one superstar running back. We've even seen the Wisconsin teams with two or three uh, star running backs. This team seemed like they trotted out like 14 different guys running the football in, in this one. So what what is this running game going to look like going forward? Uh, Garrett Groshek, he was he was injured or was he part of the? Um, he was listed as out. Um, they never really disclosed if it was an injury or COVID. Sure. I would guess it's probably the latter. Um, Isaac Garendo was another running back that was out. Those were looking like, you know, coming into the season – I think Nakia Watson, uh, he had a good game on Saturday, was going to be your your bell cow. I thought he would lead the team in carries. Groshek is kind of a guy that can do a little bit of everything, so I didn't know. He'd get plenty of touches, and then Isaac Arenda was kind of a wild card, a guy that played some receiver. They moved him to running back. Got a lot of speed and athleticism, but he was out as well. So you got to see the first um, glimpse of freshman Jalen Berger, um, a kid out of New Jersey, highly recruited. Uh, kind of from that same pipeline area that Jonathan Taylor was from. He looked really well, um, you know, led the team in rushing, a guy that uh, can come out of the backfield and catch some balls for you as well. So I think he'll end up being a guy that gets more carries as the year progresses. Um, I know without with that red shirt rule, they can work him into as many games as they want, but uh, I think he's earned some touches uh, according to what Paul Chris said in his pressers. I would expect to see more of him, more of Watson. And then there was, there was talk of a group, uh, there was 10 guys out for Wisconsin on Saturday. Um, a group of them will hopefully be back this week. Not sure if that's going to be Groshek or Garendo included. So they should have four or five guys uh, really ready to run the ball. And if not, they can do the jet sweeps and, and hand it to their fullbacks. The fullbacks are running pretty well as well. Mark Rogers TV, the voice of college football, best discussion, debate, and analysis. That's our mission here each and every day. Please subscribe. 
hit that bell for the notifications. That way, you know, when we're going live, which is just about every day, multiple times per day, talking up Wisconsin Northwestern, a bit of a semifinal matchup in the big 10 West. Sure. Other games to play. Things could fall apart. Teams could beat other teams. Uh, it's a pretty balanced division. Iowa could jump up. Purdue still only has one loss. But as it stands right now, this is going to have a huge ramifications. Before we get to Northwestern, uh, the defense was stifling. And I know, again, Michigan, Joe Milton struggling. But they were scoring points against other teams that basically didn't score one meaningful point against the Badgers. Yeah, the defense is so fun to watch. You know, that was, I think, the biggest when when the Big Ten canceled the season originally. That was my biggest disappointment. Was I really was looking forward to watching this defense? They had the guys in the secondary. Um, they've got the guys up front on the defensive line, and there was a couple question marks, um, you know, at the linebacker position. But for the most part, this defense was going to be pretty solid. And and Jim Leonard, I think, is once again showing that he's, if not. Um, the top one of the top defensive coordinators in the country. I think Wisconsin is going to have a hard time keeping him um, in that position because he's going to be a head coach or who knows, maybe he hops to the next level as the defensive coordinator. I know the Green Bay Packers probably need a guy like him at that DC spot, but he's been phenomenal week in and week out. The defense is, is so sound in their assignments. They, they play assignment football and then you're seeing the athletes really uh, fly around. So uh, hopefully that continues. I know Northwestern's playing a little bit better on offense, but uh, I think week in and week out, the, the Wisconsin defense will be the strongest unit on uh, most fields outside of maybe when they take on Ohio State. Northwestern seems to be the team that uh, we want to give any kind of credit to for being good last on the list of for anybody in the country, we have to be proven that Northwestern's good. We just don't believe it athletically. They're limited, but they, they give us pretty much the same football program all the time. Uh, they're going to win seven or eight games, maybe nine, almost every year. They're going to down cycle once in a while, every five or six years, like they did last year at three and nine. And then they'll jump up and maybe win a division like they did two years ago at eight and one in the conference. But uh, Pat Fitzgerald does what he does there. And they've got a capable quarterback now in Peyton Ramsey coming in from Indiana. Uh, they didn't run the ball well against, uh, I watched the Purdue game. Uh, Drake Anderson, Isaiah Bowser couldn't run a, run the ball against Purdue. Uh, they still found ways to win. Blake Gallagher, Patty Fisher, linebacker, have been there forever. Uh, it's just a solid Northwestern team that uh, knows who they are and what they need to do. Yeah, it really is. You know, I was looking up some numbers today for one of our articles on Bucky's fifth quarter, and it really is kind of the same Northwestern team that you're used to seeing. I mean, Pat Fitzgerald has been I think for this game, you know, both coaches, Wisconsin, you know, Paul Chris has been at Wisconsin for, you know, probably a decade when you add in, you know, his head coaching and his time as an offensive coordinator. Pat Fitzgerald's been at Northwestern for a decade. So you know what you're going to get from both of these um, coaches and these teams. Very similar styles of play, you know, sound run game. I know Northwestern sometimes, um, you know, last week struggled to run the football, but for the most part, strong run game, strong defense, assignment football. So it's, it's kind of a replica of uh, you know each team so it'd be interesting to watch kind of what uh, how this game plays out the last few years it's been low scoring you know tight game so I would have to imagine it's probably going to be uh, a lot similar to that uh, in 2020. Greg Newsom is also a pretty uh, darn good cornerback who was locked up with David Bell of Purdue uh, I noticed him make uh, several plays and really hold down David Bell you're not going to keep him from catching the ball but he didn't explode no big explosive plays downfield out of him. So just Northwestern doing their thing. It should be a whole lot of fun in Evanston. Don't expect tons of points, but uh, there will be some points in this one. I think maybe in the mid twenties, something in that range, Wisconsin and Northwestern. And again, despite the Badgers only playing the two games, they're undefeated and it almost feels like the winner of this one, boy, they've got the inside track to get to the big 10 championship game. Anything we're missing on this one, Tyler? Um, not, I think it's, it's going to be your same, like I said, same Northwestern Wisconsin game. I think it's going to come down to who's winning on third down, you know, Northwestern, um, from what I looked at today was, it's been really solid on both sides of football, either keeping drives going on third down or getting off the field on third down. Uh, Wisconsin has been the same way, a little bit smaller sample size, but I would have to say whoever keeps drives alive and, and gets the other offense off the field, who wins that third down battle is going to probably come out and be the winner. So it should be a fun one. 
slow scoring slugfest. I know having to play at Ryan Field is always a little nerve wracking for Badger fans. They haven't played well there, averaging just like 17 points the last few years they've went there. But it'll be a fun one, and uh, it's it's nice to have a Big Ten West battle uh, in, in Evanston this weekend. Folks, uh, get yourselves uh, fully prepped for the Wisconsin Northwestern game. Head on over to Bucky's fifth quarter on SB Nation. Check out their site, of course. Uh, like the video here, comment, uh, share the videos on social media, and please subscribe right here at Mark Rogers TV, the voice of college football. All right, Tyler, enjoy the game. Thank you. Have a good one, Mark.